Hi, my name is Richard, I'm from Plant Photonics and welcome to the second in our series of Light Grow Light technology videos. At the end of our last video, we discovered that 3 watt LEDs do not appear to draw 3 watts. We tested the standard red LED and it came out at about 1.6 watts, something along those lines. Anyway, nowhere near 3 watts. So this video is going to be on LED power ratings. We're going to be looking at 1, 3 and 5 watt LEDs, what that actually means and what they actually draw. And that's important for a couple of reasons. One, if you want to design your own LED light and you've got the 100 watt power supply, you want 100 watt of LEDs, you need to work out how many LEDs that is and for the different combinations of colors that you might use. The other reason is that if you're looking at buying a pre-made pre -made LED grow light, if you look at a lot of the descriptions, they'll say 300 watt grow light, and in brackets it'll say 100 times 3 watt LEDs. So the first thing to do is to go to the workbench and take a look at each color of LED that you're most likely to be using in your LED grow light or find in the one that you're buying, and find out exactly what wattage each of them actually is. Okay, so let's go do that and let's head off to the workbench. Okay, so what I got here is I've got one of each type of LED. I've got far red, hyper red, red, standard red, blue, ultraviolet, and white. These are all of the types of LEDs that you might find in a uh, LED grow light. So what I'm going to do now is quickly run each one up to its rated 700 milliamps, and we'll see how much voltage each one takes, and that way we can work out the actual wattage for each color. So, starting with the far red. You can see this does not look bright even though I'm running it up there. Okay, that's two volts. Two volts for the far red. And as you can tell, neither your eyes nor the camera are particularly sensitive to that. Now, this is the hyper red, and that is taking 2.4 volts for hyper red. Now, the standard red. Okay, that's 2.2 volts. Now the blue, I'm going to make sure I shield my eyes from it a bit because it's not good to uh, stare at blue light. It's, uh... Okay, and this is about 3.1 volts for... This is actually a royal blue. Now again, turn the voltage down a little bit. Ultraviolet is definitely something you do not want to stare into. Okay, this is 3.6 volts for uh, ultraviolet. And finally, turn this down a little bit. White. And that is 3 volts. So 3 volts for white. Right, that's covered all of the different uh, LEDs you're likely to find in a grow light, so let's go see what that actually means as number of watts. Okay, so we can see from the chart below that none of the LEDs actually came close to 3 watts. Now starting from the left we've got far red, that actually worked out at 1.4 watts, hyper red 1.68 watts, standard red 1.54 watts, royal blue 2.17 watts, ultraviolet 2.52 watts and white 2.1 watts. Okay well as we've seen none of the LEDs came very close to 3 watts. The closest was about 2.5 watts. 
and the lowest was only 1.4 watts. So what gives? Well, there's one more piece of the puzzle, so we need to go back to the workbench. But one thing, this is really, really important. If you're planning on doing any work at all with LEDs, it's really important that you understand this next bit because otherwise you run the risk of making a very expensive mistake as you fry all your expensive LEDs. So let's head up to the workbench and I'll do a quick run through on what happens as you increase power through a normal light bulb like an incandescent and through a LED and you'll see the difference in the results. Right, let's go. Okay, here I've got two light sources. One a standard incandescent, this is a 12 volt 5 watt car bulb and this is your standard red LED. I just want to show you what happens when you start putting some power through them and how the current goes up as the voltage increases. Now, let's see, we start off, we'll go up to 1 volt and we've got 100 milliamps. Okay, let's take it up to 2 volts. got 138 and it's starting to glow. Take it up to 3 volts. We're at uh, 170. 4 volts. Come on. 4 volts we're at 200. 5 volts 228. 6 volts. See each one is going up about 25 milliamps. Uh, 6 volts at 250. So the next one should be about 275. And sure enough, it is. Okay, 8. We should be hitting 3 volts. Yeah, and we are. 3 volts. 9. Oops, yeah, man. Then we're at about 320. Ten volts, three forty, eleven, three fifty eight, and twelve, three seventy five. So we went up twenty five milliamps each volt that we went up. Now, turning this way down, see what happens with a lead. It's rather different. Now, you don't get anything. We're going up to 1.5, 6. Okay. 1.7, only 0 to 4. Take it up to 8. We're up to 0 0.096, almost uh, 0 0.1. 9, we're up to 2.22. Two volts, we're at 346 milliamps. 2.1, it that's almost doubled. We're now up to 560 something. 2.2, 700. And 2.3, 800, and that's its maximum. So it went up much faster at that time. I'm going to graph those and show you what it looks like because that's quite an important concept when it comes to LEDs. Okay, so I've graphed out the results of the tests. Now here's the incandescent light bulb test. And as you can see, as I increased the voltage from 1 to 12 volts, the current increased regularly. For each volt it went up by 25 milliamps, so you get a nice straight line. As the voltage increases, so does the current, and it does it in a predictable, even manner. Devices that react like this are called linear devices. Now let's take a look at the red LED. As you can see, it's a completely different situation. Uh, the voltage starts off at 1 volt. Absolutely nothing happens until you hit 1.7 volts. Then at 1.8 volts, you're getting about 80 milliamps. And then it increases rapidly. And by the time you've hit 2.4 volts, you've actually overshot the maximum current for that by a little bit. And you're up to 800 milliamps and one tenth of a volt more and it shot up to 1.2 amps now if i'd left it there for very long it would have blown now as you can see there the 
increase in current is not reliable, dependable, and constant as it is with the incandescent. Devices like this where the current increases rapidly after a certain point are called nonlinear devices. And this causes a bit of a problem because, as you can see, just a tiny variation in voltage can result in the lead blowing. You're probably wondering where I'm going with all these explanations and demonstrations. Well, the first demonstration was to show you that each color of lead requires a different voltage to reach, reach its operating power, and none of them actually are 3 watts. The second demonstration was to show you the difference between incandescent and lead light and how incredibly sensitive LED lighting is to the voltage. I mean, one tenth of a watt is enough to take it from well below its rated power to well over its rated power to the point where it would blow up in a few minutes. Now, as you can imagine, the combination of different voltages and extreme sensitivity creates a bit of a nightmare for anyone working with LEDs. You basically would need a different power supply for each color of LED and even different bins, uh, different batches of LEDs that are the same color have different power requirements. So you'd have to each batch of LEDs would have to be matched to a power supply. The solution to that is to just look at the current. Each of those LEDs in a different color demonstration was run at 700 milliamps. And that is actually what a 3 watt LED means. A 3 watt LED is a member of a class or family of LEDs which consumes, it has to be driven at 700 milliamps. Yeah. A 1 watt LED is one that is driven at 350 milliamps and a 5 watt LED is one that is driven at 1000 milliamps. These are the traditional ratings and when you're looking at LED grow lights this is what they're talking about. This simplifies things, all you need is a power supply that puts out 700 milliamps and it'll work with any color, any mix of colors of 3 watt LEDs. Yeah. Same thing for, for 1 watt and 5 watt, they each have their own power supplies. But that means you just need one power supply for each uh, family of LEDs that you're dealing with. This greatly simplifies things. It's also inf information that's useful to you because now you know what the actual wattage of each color of LED is, and most grow lights are using 3 watt LEDs. You can actually look at a picture in Amazon or eBay and simply by counting the, the LEDs of different colors, you can work out what the total LED wattage is. Generally, it's a lot different from the claims that they make. In fact, that is actually what we're going to be looking at in the next video. It's going to be one of the most interesting ones for a lot of people because we're going to look at the different ways that LED grow lights are rated and how honest they are, what they really mean, and how you can confirm that they're accurate or not. So I hope to see you again. I hope you've learned something from this video. If you have, please like it. Uh, please subscribe. I'm going to be doing a whole series of these. They're going to cover every single aspect of LED grow light technology. And of course, please comment. I would love to get some comments on these videos, any ways that I can improve them, suggestions on what you'd like to see from me. I mean, I have my own ideas, but so do you. So please let me know what they are. And I promise I'll try and do a video on it. And well, I hope you've learned something and enjoyed it and happy growing. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers.